The smartest way to get to 20% body fat for women and 10% for men is to temporarily forget about getting to that goal. It sounds counterintuitive at first. I know. Which is why when I was losing fat, I spent $17,000 and many years doing the intuitive but wrong things. You may be doing them too. But to switch to the counterintuitive approach, you need to first see why the intuitive approach doesn't work Let's dig in. I have always been healthy and active as a kid. I ate whatever mom made, which thankfully consisted of plenty of veggies, lean proteins, and in moderation, rice. Growing up in Indonesia around beautiful beaches, natural scenery, and sunny weather year round, I also loved to swim, run around, explore different hiking trails with my classmates. The world was my playground, and I had no concept of exercise, only play. That all changed when I moved to the States for university, where dreary winters kept me indoors and sedentary much of the year, and no longer having access to mom's cooking, my diet now consisted of pizza and coke, and my first introduction to American portion sizes. I remember when I ordered my first personal pizza, shocked by the size, wondering who can possibly eat this much in one sitting? A few months later, guess who was eating that much and more every day? Yup. This doesn't bother me, I try to convince myself, but I was lying. I'll never forget the day I was shopping with my best friend at Forever 21. I remember taking the same size shirt I always used to wear off the shelf, walking into the changing room and finding myself struggling to fit. I remember staring at myself in the mirror with the shirt bunched up around my shoulders and one arm awkwardly hanging up in the air, thinking, how could this not fit? I didn't buy anything that day. Instead, I immediately went home and Googled how to lose weight. And I figured out a super low calorie diet of salads and chicken breast and high intensity exercise regimens. I tracked every bite of food and saw immediate changes. Weight loss felt easy. At the rate I was going, I thought I would hit my goals in six months, just in time for the end of year celebrations and showing off my new bod to my friends. But life had other plans. I got invited to a party and when I got to the restaurant, I promptly had a finger food stray shoved in my face. Yes, please. I don't even know how many of those mini burgers and quiches I had. I had a fabulous time until I got home and tried logging everything I had eaten. When I first punched in my main dinner entree, pasta marinara, my fitness pal showed me options anywhere from 300 calories to 1000 calories. I picked the lowest calorie option because I didn't want to admit I might have eaten more. I also racked my brain trying to remember all the other random bites I'd had before finally just giving up after seeing how they could all add up. I felt like my perfect track record was ruined and now I had no clue how my way in would go. So I skipped the way in completely. This went on for a few weeks before I finally found the nerve to get back on the scale. Of course, it went up. I thought it would take me six months to reach my goal, but I was already three months in and back to where I started. My confidence plummeted as I realized I was falling behind on my goals. I couldn't help but think, maybe if I just try harder this time, I'll make it by the end of the year. I went back to a restrictive diet and this time added a trainer to hold me accountable. For more inspiration, I look for YouTube videos about losing 20 pounds in 20 days or 50 pounds in three months. And whatever they did, I'd pile that on top of what I was already doing. Low carb, juicing, strength training, hit, you name it, I did it. All that inevitably exhausted my willpower such that I'd eventually cave to the donuts my coworker would bring to work or have that extra slice of pizza when eating out again and again and again. Of course, throughout all this, I only remembered the painful moments of sore workouts and food restriction. So when I would see my weight go up, I'd think, I'm doing so much. Why am I not losing weight? This would spiral me into chasing new weight loss programs one after another. Not only did I not make it to my goal by the end of the year, I was actually stuck in this pattern for many more years to come until my world got flipped upside down one fateful flight from Seattle to Boston. I remember chowing down a ham bagel sandwich while running for the gate. I got onto the flight and suddenly I felt like I couldn't breathe. When I landed in Boston, still miraculously alive, I figured that was a one-off fluke. But then it happened again as I sat down to watch the Star Trek Into Darkness premiere. I visited a cardiologist who hooked me up to a 24 seven heart monitor. The results, nothing wrong. And yet I can't breathe episodes kept happening again and again and again. I felt helpless. As these episodes brought me face to face with my own mortality, I questioned what I really wanted out of life. What was all this effort for? In asking that question, I no longer saw weight loss and getting healthy as something to do by a particular time frame or some kind of vanity metric to achieve. I was in it for lifelong health and the ability to live a limitless life. To see the off the beaten paths of the world that only with physical stamina and fitness could I see. I wanted exercise to feel like play again. I didn't care anymore for 21 pounds in 21 days 
or how she lost 50 pounds in three months. Blindly trying to achieve goals laid out by society and media no longer attracted me. And therefore, I no longer felt the need to do exactly what these get fit quick programs say. This was the first game changing thing I did. Detach my motivation from timelines or any sense of urgency so I can get clear on why I want to lose weight and get healthy. Next was to apply analytical thinking from my engineering background to lose weight. Some context, I went to school for engineering and was working in Microsoft at the time. So it had become ingrained in me to take a systematic analytical approach to problems. I don't think it is the best approach for every problem, not to mention it can be quite laborious. So I only employ it for really serious problems. And this qualified as the mother of all serious problems. Now, the first and most essential step to solving engineering problems, collecting honest data. I resolved to track everything this time, even when I caved and ate more pizza than I intended, even when I felt bloated and didn't want to step on the scale. So what if I slipped up here or there? Hiding from the reality of what I was eating meant I'd forever be trying to make progress in a fog. And I wanted to confront reality and see clearly what's holding me back. Sure, my ego took a hit whenever I slipped, but once I separated feelings from data, only then was I able to understand what were my biggest bottleneck habits to upgrade. And since I was no longer in a hurry, it gave me space to only focus on making one small change at a time. We call this tackling the bottleneck. We all know that in order to lose weight, you need to follow a very simple equation. Eat fewer calories than you burn. However, putting this equation in practice isn't always so simple. First, your calories out part of the equation isn't just influenced by exercise, but also hormones, sleep, stress, digestion, and possibly your microbiome. Second is the calories in part. Even once you know your calorie deficit, there are so many ways to meet your calorie target that it's impractical to try every tactic. What we even found in practice is that by focusing just on your highest caloric contributors and tweaking those one step at a time, you'll eventually find the right path for you. Once I committed to tracking everything I ate, regardless of whether they were good or bad foods, I noticed that the foods that tend to put me most over my targets were Coke and pizza. Those were my bottleneck foods. Off the two, at least pizza kept me more satiated and satisfied than Coke. So I decided to reduce my Coke consumption. Yes, I could have reduced pizza too. In fact, at this stage in my life, I could have upgraded hundreds of different things about my nutrition. But rather than trying to revamp my entire diet, which historically led to burning out my willpower, I focused just on reducing my Coke intake by one can a day at a time, then eventually replacing it completely with something less caloric. Then I went to tackle my next bottleneck. Pizza. I didn't see fast weight loss initially, but over time, small, consistent changes like this put me back in a calorie deficit such that I started to see small, consistent progress. By the end of my journey, I went from this to this, from eating this to this, and from getting winded walking up just one block of hills to actually enjoying physical activity every day. This seems like a huge transformation, but if you broke it down by stages, each stage of the journey looked more like this. Each stage had its own unique set of bottlenecks that I tackled tackled one at a time. For instance, when I was about 30% body fat, the biggest bottleneck things were simply to eat fewer processed foods and control portions when eating out. I didn't even need to exercise to see progress. By the time I was in the 25 to 29% body fat range, I had to replace lower nutrient foods like empty carbs and sugar with higher nutrient foods like vegetables and protein to keep me satiated on fewer calories as my TDE or maintenance calories decreased over time, which is a normal occurrence when you're losing fat. I also had to scale down how much I was eating out. Finally, once I was in the 20 to 24% body fat range, only then did I have to start strength training in order to build muscle mass. Since at this stage, I was starting to lose more muscle than fat. Finally, I had to increase my sleep since they were affecting my cravings and energy levels. But what was amazing was that I never felt like I was doing too much at any stage in my journey. By the time I was ready to tackle a new bottleneck, I was just taking on a new small challenge, not adding on to existing ones. Because those existing ones had already turned into automatic habits. This is why by the time I made it to the end of my transformation journey, all these new habits I mentioned before felt natural and easy to maintain afterward. This combined with reminding myself of my dream life helped me sustain momentum throughout the months leading up to this point, preventing me from falling off the wagon. So my formula for long-term success Dream big while acting small. Thus, the smartest way to get to 20% is to just focus on the one thing you need to change to get to the next percent. When I was at 30% body fat, I just focused on what's one thing I could change to get to 29%. And at 29%, I just focused on the next percent and so on, rather than trying to go from 30 to 20% in one go. That's why it's necessary in practice to temporarily forget the 20% body fat goal. This system changed my life. 
After seven years of being stuck, I reached my dream body within a year and have maintained it without tracking for eight years now. I've never had another can't breathe episode again, and I'm in shape enough to do my dream 510 mile Camino de Santiago hike next summer. I could not even have imagined this seven years ago. Now you know what to do. The steps in the system can take some time, like identifying what kind of data is useful to collect and how to use it to identify your bottlenecks. You have two options at this point. One, if you want a tried and tested proven system that teaches you how to look at your progress holistically as well as when to act and when it's critical you don't then check out the free sneak peek into my badass body boss program in the comments below or two if you want to diy it then you don't want to ignore this video which walks step by step how our badass body boss students track progress holistically i also described case studies showing how without this tracking the student would have headed in completely the wrong direction causing months of lost progress check it out now and always remember you can do it